Hey everyone, it's been a time. So basically I've been out in the field for uh, you know the last some odd weeks and pretty much working throughout the day. And so this is the first time in the last few weeks where I've had time off and it's not in the middle of a torrential downpour. So basically I decided to make a video for some of the people interested in field biology and the kinds of things I carry around with me on basically every field job, right? So what is the equipment that regardless of the specifics of the field job, whether I'm surveying for marble murelets, spotted owls, whether I'm collecting bear hair or something like that from hair snares out in the mountains, what kind of equipment do I bring that will be used regardless of the specifics of the job? So these are things that are just kind of generalizably useful in the outdoors, and that's really what I'm gonna focus on throughout this video. Well, take two. I kind of forgot to press the record button, so I had about six minutes of talking that is now somewhere lost in the ether. So regardless of job, you're often gonna have kind of tools and various things that need to hold on to and store while you're walking around in the woods or wherever you happen to be doing field work. And as a consequence, you're really going to want a backpack of some kind. Now, the specifics of what backpack to use and how to use it is gonna be entirely up to the individual person. There are people that like, you know, super lightweight backpacks that don't have a lot in the way of pockets, very sleek and simple. Because I'm like naturally a little bit scatterbrained, you know, I have like ADHD and stuff like this where I kind of naturally tend to lose things if left to my own devices. <laughs> um, I really like a backpack that has a lot of different pockets where I can store things in very specific places and so I can have systems of knowing exactly what to reach for and where it is and that kind of reduces the likelihood that I run into some problem of, you know, leaving something out in the field. In this particular backpack, I've got this kind of hard pocket uh, up here in the front and uh, in this kind of hard shell pocket, um, I'll keep things like batteries, um, the voice recorder that I use for the wildlife surveys I work on, where I'll gather data by speaking into the voice recorder. Um, I'll keep that in here. In the front pocket, I'll always have a med kit with me where I can treat wounds or apply uh, you know, anti-inflammation. Uh, you know, wipes to things like insect stings, which I've used before. I've cut my thumb open out in the woods and stuff like that. And so it's always good to have just like basic medical supplies with you for some of the standard kind of background wear and tear that you can find out in the field. So middle pocket, often if there's like some kind of primary work gear, I'll keep it in here. So right now I have a whole bunch of rolls of flagging. All right, so that's the backpack. What else do I carry with me? So because the Pacific Northwest is very, very rainy at the time of year, this is literally like the first somewhat dry day we've had and it still rained here quite recently. I'm just kind of taking advantage of this dry spell. Um, I'll always uh, be wearing or have available a rain jacket. So this is a jacket with material where water Water will hit the jacket and instead of soaking like a lot of other material does, water tends to just kind of flow off of the jacket. And so you can walk around in the rain without having your undergear soaked. And especially this time of year where it's quite cold, you, know, you can have days in the kind of low 40s, uh, high 30s, which is not so bad in itself, but when combined with water, it can be deadly. It's really good to have gear that will keep the rain off of you. And so it's not just safer, but it's also just more comfortable and more enjoyable to be out and about when you are at least less soaked. I've really come to the conclusion that rain in general just makes everything harder. It's always just a constant battle when you're out here to deal with that particular aspect of nature and the elements. And so inside the rain jacket, I have kind of two primary pockets. And what I carry in those pockets partly will vary from job to job, but there are two things that I carry here that I think are unbelievably useful that I use as part of my just standard navigation system. Regardless of the job, regardless of where I'm going, if I need to find a site somewhere out in the woods, I'll really carry these two things with me. So number one is a GPS of some kind. And as with the other components of this video, I'm not necessarily recommending a given brand of GPS, but some kind of GPS that will have 
a set of maps installed where you can select individual waypoints and get a distance and then get the degree measurement to that location, so like using a compass. And once I get that degree measurement, I then will use uh, the compass here and shoot a bearing to that location. It will tell me in what direction that degree measurement is. And so I treat my GPS, my compass, as this kind of symbiotic system where I'll get bearings from the GPS and I'll shoot bearings with the compass. And that then will allow me to navigate a route that will lead to the site I want without having to try to figure out your direction from GPSs, which are as often a gigantic pain because you can't necessarily tell where you're going when standing still. Often you have to be moving from one location to another. And so when you're, you know, for example, stuck in a very, very thick patch of bush and salmonberry and things where your visibility is very limited, that's really not an option. But with something like this, you can then just follow a line based on these sets of compass bearings to get you to the location that need to be. And so I've been able to access sites where decommissioned roads that you can take to it are kind of hidden by vegetation. And so I had to kind of bushwhack and go cross country. And I use this system to be able to actually access these places. So I love that combination so much and I never rely strictly on one versus the other. I always have the GPS of some kind with me and if it's not this one, there are also options for attaching it to your phone, uh, which is another thing that I often bring with me. I listen to a lot of podcasts while out in the field because you know, they can be really, really long days and lots of kind of kind of grunt work of carving branches and stuff like that. And so I'll often have my phone with me to be able to play podcasts and listen to things and learn about stuff around the world while I'm doing some of these kind of communal activities that don't necessarily require a lot in the way of my uh, focus and concentration. The boots you wear are just so important. And this is another thing that is gonna vary from person to person. Different people have preferences. Some people forego boots entirely. I'm definitely not one of those people. The number of times I've you know, navigated giant log falls and clusters of rocks and hidden stumps and all the things that you can find out in the field. Having a boot that to some extent supports your ankle to avoid twists and turns and breaks is so, so useful to have because there's been many times Times where I've had my heel roll like this, but because there's some degree of support from above the ankle joint, then it ends up just hitting the edge of the boot and not rolling in itself. It stops it from continuing to roll and that can absolutely avoid injuries out in the woods. Now, the brand of boot that you use is obviously gonna be completely up to you. I'm a person who has kind of a weird foot where I have a wide front and a regular back. And as a consequence, there's a company called Vask that makes boots that is like the only boot company that actually fits me. And so I've been using this one model uh, of boot for probably the last like seven or eight years. I'll just wear them out in the field and then get them replaced eventually and then order another set when that pair gets worn out. And they usually last um, probably a couple of years per set. So um, they're a pretty good investment. Have the money to spend and you're gonna be spending a lot of time out in the wilderness, you know, doing field work and that kind of thing. Having a good set of boots is so important and so useful. Okay, so I think that's probably gonna be it for this particular video. I hope you, this was uh, useful for helping you uh, see some of the stuff I carry on with me out in the field. And hopefully for those of you who are aspiring field biologists, it gives you some idea of what you may want to bring out in the field. There's a whole lot of other stuff that I'll do future videos on from uh, the equipment I bring for camping and being able to stay out in the wilderness overnight and the food I bring and all these things. But I figure this is at least a good start for showing you some of the equipment that I uh, bring along with me out in the field and hope that you find it useful. So I don't know when the next video will be, but uh, I'll take advantage of the windows of time and weather as they appear and hope you all are uh, enjoying yourselves as much as you can in this time and finding moments of, of uh, tranquility and solitude outdoors. Till next time, everyone. It's starting to rain. Wonder and wonder.